Let's preview week seven. We got Georgia Southern at JMU and Georgia State hosting Marshall. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Need to do one thing first. Again, thank you for uh, continuing to support it. But oddly enough, I don't know if my ears were burning or whatever the case was, but uh, yesterday as I was, and maybe you know this or not, I try to put the episode and a little uh, you know, Facebook post into the different fan pages of the schools to spread the word about it. And for some reason, while I was doing that, and maybe maybe not for some reason, I, I put it in the Old Dominion uh, Athletics page, fan page. And I was like, did I do Old Dominion last night? And I don't think I did. I forgot about Old Dominion. And wouldn't you know it, I got a comment. And I deserve the a lack of, in this case, Old Dominion. Chit chat. All right. Uh, we did talk about him a little bit, but I probably did him a little bit more on the Southern Miss side of things. And that's on me. Let's see if we can find the exact comment because it's true. And I, I, I blew it. And so I do want to apologize uh, to one commenter, Dave, I've been watching your videos and you've never covered my team. I was expecting a mention in this video, but again, you're true to form and did not cover old dominion. The only time you said their name is when you complain about the team who lost to them, which he's right. If you're going to cover the Sun Belt, then do a better job and cover every team and not just the teams you are fond of. He's absolutely right. I apologize. My fault. Uh, we obviously covered uh, the Cajuns game. Okay, obviously. I uh, thought we did a little bit more than that. We certainly talked about them against Marshall. But you you are uh, you're exactly right. So I apologize. Put it in the comments. It was my fault. Um, they would be on the disappointing side of things, you know, to to be honest on where we are with them in terms of most surprising or uh, disappointing, right? They are two and one actually in the conference, three and three overall. A little bit surprising with a win over Southern Miss, uh, but I think more was expected out of them, at least from the old Dominion point of view. I know they were picked to finish last in the East, so... Maybe I'm actually wrong on that uh, as well. They do have wins over the Cajuns and uh, Southern Miss. So let's see what they got coming up. Now let's do this. We got to do this. We'll get to JMU here in a second. Let's see who they got. They got, uh, they're hosting App State. They're at JMU, Coastal, at Liberty, at Georgia Southern, at Georgia State. So there's no, those are not cakewalks for anybody. It doesn't matter who, who you are in this case. Uh, so we'll see how they do. All right. They are two and one in the conference. All right. And three and three overall, uh, loss against Virginia tech. The game that really hurts is, is they lost to wake. They should not have lost to wake. Not at all. All right. They barely beat Texas A&M commerce. Okay, fine. Win to move on, but they really blew the ball game, uh, to wake. They had a chance to start out two and one and then three and one with a win over Texas A&M commerce. Uh, they wouldn't go away against Marshall. I will say that they will not, they wouldn't go away against Marshall, uh, but they should have beaten Wake Forest. They let that one get away from it. All right. But you're wrong. You're not wrong. I did. I did leave them out of the most, uh, most surprising and most disappointing uh, teams of this year. And I guess maybe I, I'm going to change what I said. They're probably a little bit more surprising. I didn't realize what the record was till I looked at it. So they're two and one in conference and three and three overall. You know, hey, get a couple of more wins out of those. Not going to be easy, those six ball games, but uh, you never do know they are hosting App State next uh, week. Okay. 
Uh, big ball game this week is obviously JMU and Georgia Southern. It is in Harrisonburg. It is a little bit interesting that it has gone from a three-point spread on Sunday to a six-point spread on, uh, well, on Thursday is when it was, and we'll see what it is by the time the game comes around. JMU is 5-0, 2-0 in the conference. They're atop the East. Uh, Georgia Southern 1-0 in the conference, 4-1 overall. They're only lost to uh, Wisconsin. James Madison has a bunch of close wins. Uh, had to come from behind to beat Virginia after blowing a big lead, 36-35. Good two-point win at Troy, 16-14. Uh, they let a big lead slip away against Utah State. Utah State beat them 45-38. And despite the score, they were in control of that South Alabama ball game uh, the whole time. But still, outside of Bucknell, all of their wins are by one score. This ball game is at 11 a.m. on Saturday, and it is on ESPN two. All right. So let's look at the matchups. All right. Georgia Southern a little bit more explosively on offense, 472 yards or so to 400. And, you know, Georgia Southern leads the league in passing, which has got to be odd for Eagles fans, uh, 337 yards to just 240 for JMU. Uh, Georgia Southern does rush it pretty well. 135 yards a ball game. But I'm not sure that's going to be feasible against JMU. JMU is giving up less than 40 yards a game on the ground. That's really impressive. All right. Um, Offensively, JMU, 242 passing, 160 yards on the ground. Defensively, they're about the same. They really are in terms of overall. Bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler. Georgia Southern has given up 360 yards a game, JMU 350. The difference is JMU, uh, Georgia Southern is given up 220 in the air and 140 on the ground. Whereas teams are behind JMU a lot. They can't run the ball at all. So they got to throw it around. We'll see if that makes a difference. Remember Davis Brin, five interception game, six turnover game against, against Wisconsin, including a fumble, but he has turned it around since, let's see, yeah, he's turned it around since. He's got seven touchdowns and no uh, no interceptions in his last two ball games. So the 12 touchdowns to seven interceptions doesn't look good overall, but five of them are in one ball game. All right. And he leads the conference in passing. You got Jordan McLeod, uh, Arizona transfer. Having a pretty good year himself. Not quite as prolific, but 11 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Did a good job of leading JMU after giving up the lead to Virginia to come back for a victory. Pretty good uh, there. They're about even uh, uh, in rushing. Uh, Caleb Hood, 39 receptions, 414 yards. So he is going to be looking at, you know, doubling that or so. He could very well. Last ball game, he had 12 catches, 131 yards. So he is, I think they had the week off because they only got, yeah, they only have five games. So uh, he's going to be looking towards 90 to 100 catches, which is insane (laughs) for Georgia Southern football team. Again, this game is six points. I'm going to take Georgia Southern. I think Georgia Southern is going to win this football game. Other than I just think Jamie is going to have a tough time Stopping Georgia Southern's offense. Uh, I think James Madison's incredibly tough at home. I think in our Twitter spaces, someone said they're 51 and three at home uh, over an extended period of time, obviously. But I'm going to take Georgia Southern this one. I think they're going to upset JMU and throw that Sun Belt East in a mess. Uh, or though in this case, Georgia Southern would take control. Uh, Marshall, remember, is also undefeated in the conference. We'll get to them uh, as well here momentarily. But I'm going to take Georgia Southern not only to cover, but to win uh, the ball game. I think JMU is going to have a tough time stopping uh, Georgia Southern's air attack. All right, we'll come back. There's only, by the way, I think there's only four games. Isn't that right? Five games all week, if you include 
Tuesday's ball game. Uh, that's five for uh, this week. So there's not a whole lot to preview <laughs> uh, this week. Georgia Southern, James Madison, Detroit Army, Marshall, Georgia State, UL Monroe at Texas State. So there's only four games on Saturday. Cajuns are off. And I know South Alabama and Southern Miss are playing on Tuesday. So they're, they're technically off, but they're playing next week. Okay, among others. Okay, so let's take a time out. When we come back, we'll get into the Marshall uh, Georgia State ball game. Time to tell you about LinkedIn. There we go. <laughs> and there we go. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, again, let's, uh, we're going to drink out green tea, I swear. Uh, all right, let's talk about Marshall and Georgia State. Marshall is still one of those teams, very good. But I don't know what's happened with the defense. They were one of the top defenses in the conference last year. They're not awful. They're giving up 340, not 350 yards a game. Just about 350 yards a game. Maybe the surprising part <clears throat> for Marshall is that they're go they're over 400 yards a game. All right, with Rasheen Ali and actually Cam Fancher playing okay. Six touchdowns isn't great. The five interceptions is not great either, to be honest with you. But they didn't really lose the ball game, Tennessee State, because of Camp Bancher. Sorry. The problem is with Marshall uh, right now is that they're giving up way too many <clears throat> explosive plays. Uh, and they did against uh, NC State. Had about three, four uh, touchdowns, 39-yard pass, touchdown. 37-yard run, touchdown. 62-yard pass, touchdown. All right. That's against NC State. Against ODU, three more big time explosive plays. Kadarius Calloway, 70 yard run, touchdown. Kadarius Calloway, 69 yard run, touchdown. Kadarius Calloway, 75 yard touchdown run. 75 yard run touchdown, right? So that's six plays. Got to be averaging about 55, 60 yards per play. A couple of them were in those high 30s. So that brings down the average. So that's a problem. All right. Still goes on the yardage. You know, when you win, it's one thing you beat ODU, but then you come back and because you give up a couple of a, a couple of big time plays, and I think the offense sort of stalled towards the end of the ball game. Uh, that's an issue. It's got to be a major concern for a coach off. That is difficult to deal with. Georgia State coming off a loss they had last week off. They're coming off their loss against Troy a couple weeks ago, uh, twenty eight to seven, where their offense didn't do anything because Troy's defense is really good. All right. Um, so maybe we're still wondering about Georgia State's offense. They played really well against Coastal Carolina, and their defense did as well. But are they closer to what that was, or are they closer to what happened against Troy? Darren Granger's had a fantastic year. They're averaging over 400 yards on offense. The problem is they're giving up 400 yards on defense, which is a little bit surprising. 300 yards a game in the air. We'll see how Cam Fancher does against that. Uh, they are giving up 102 yards on the ground. That's pretty good. So we'll see if Marshall can find any running room for Rasheen Ali. I 
think, let's see here. Oh, I was going to, uh, Georgia State's actually one point favorite. I'm going to take the road team as well. Marshall, big opportunity for Georgia State. Uh, they, with a win, they'd be five and one overall, two and one in the conference. And with a showdown, once again, on ESPN, this game's on ESPN too. Uh, at 6 p.m. So that's a couple of games on national TV on Saturday. And then Georgia State's going to play the Cajuns for homecoming on ESPN U at 7 p.m. Okay. Well, technically this game is at 7 p.m. as well, being it is in, uh, it's in Atlanta. So the homecoming against the Cajuns is obviously in Lafayette. That will still be at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, local time. So that game will be played late. Uh, all right, so I'm going to like Marshall in this one. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, the other couple of ball games. Again, not much left. Um, and then we'll wrap it up as well. It is time to talk about Fan Duel. Got it. Snap into action this NFL season with Fan Duel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place. A $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. There we go. All right, only a couple more games. Uh, we talked about this one a little bit yesterday was Troy is going to Army. Now, Troy got a little bit lucky last year. I believe they won that ball game 10-9 to against Army. Let's see if my memory is correct. Also, this game is on national TV, CBS Sports Network. So that's pretty cool. Let's go to Troy. Schedule 2022. Let's see what this score was. Army 10-9. to Army misses. Was it a short field goal? Let's figure that out. Let's see what it was. Play by play. I don't think it was an extremely long field goal. 42-yard field goal. So a makeable field goal. All right. So uh, it is supposed to be wet. It's certainly going to be chilly compared to what Troy is used to. It's supposed to be in the 50s and rainy. Uh, having watched Army play Syracuse this year, uh, they are tough to defend, but once John Summerall and the Trojans make the adjustments, they should be fine. Spread is Troy, five and a half. I will take that. Uh, Kamani Vidal coming off a uh, a big-time ball game, what, 248 yards, 246? Uh, let's see what the Army uh, defense is. Army's pretty balanced defensively, 164 yards pass, passing yards, 166 yards allowed on the ground. Troy is only allowing 84 yards on the ground. They're going to have a little bit of difficulty when that starts, although they played them last year. They're doing something a little bit different this year, uh, but Army's pretty good. They average 200 yards on the ground. All right, Troy, again, like Marshall, the surprise, four, 444 yards a game offensively. That's a ton. There is no way South Alabama is averaging that. Let me see. And that's with two huge ball games offensively let's see what we got here quick look ahead that's what troy is doing let's see here nope south alabama 414 if you had to tell me that troy and maybe marshall were going to be averaging more yards per game than south alabama i would have called you nuts nuts and i'd be wrong i'm the one who's nuts all right last ball game texas state uh, licking their wounds with their loss to the Cajuns. Monroe coming off a blowout loss to South Alabama. Texas State 4-2 and two, and uh, Monroe 2-3. and three. If Texas State wants to stay in the race, they obviously have to win this one. They're 1-1 one one in the Sun Belt. Monroe is 0-2. Texas State 16.5. That's a lot of points. That's kind of going back to what, what happened to Monroe against South Alabama. Uh, Mahdi, I guess, is banged up. I certainly carried a lot. Didn't he carry it like 34 times against the Cajuns? And on the second to last drive, he got a he got a first down. So I'm trying to figure out where where the uh where the injury is. Uh TJ Finley played pretty well. They just didn't do a good job of putting it in the end zone when they had a shot. 
against the Cajuns. I look for Texas State to win. I wouldn't be surprised if they do cover that spread. Monroe can score a little bit. I will take uh, Texas State. Uh, tough, real tough spot for Monroe, right? They uh, they had a letdown, I guess. They almost beat App State, and then probably should have beaten App State. And then they got pummeled by South Alabama. We'll see if they recover uh, heading to San Marcos uh, this weekend. But that's the only that's the only ball game that's on the plus. How about that? So, so this week, Coastal Carolina and App State were on. I thought they were on ESPN, right? Uh, Georgia Southern and James Madison. That's on the deuce. Troy and Army on CBS Sports Network. Nice. Marshall and Georgia State on the deuce. Very nice. All right. And then on Tuesday, right, the the, uh, the Jaguars have to be on. Let's see what's next week. The Jaguars got to be on. They're on the deuce. James Madison and Marshall, which is a huge game on Thursday. That's on ESPN. Georgia State and the Cajuns are on ESPNU. And they're waiting to see where App State and Old Dominion are going to play. So uh, lots of national TV exposure for uh, the Sun Belt. It is good to see. Again, apologize to our ODU fan who uh, called me out, and rightfully so, did not talk about them in yesterday's episode. Uh, they're off, so there wasn't much to talk about them uh, this week, although we did find out that they, they're they a little bit better than I thought. They're 2-1 and one in the conference, 3-3. Three and three. Overall, they do have a gauntlet of a schedule for the final six games, but certainly have a chance to go bowling. And anything close to that is going to be welcomed in Norfolk. So again, I apologize. Uh, All right. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please continue to, well, I guess if you subscribe once, you don't have to subscribe again, but please tell other people to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And uh, don't forget about the audio podcast. You can search wherever you get them. Lockdown Sunbelt. But uh, the most popular ones are obviously Apple Podcasts. Please rate and review and Spotify. All right, everybody, enjoy the football. We'll talk to you again next week. Uh, And thank you so much for watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day.